Let's learn about rhinestones. You're gonna need designer edition or higher for this one. So head over to Silhouette's website. You're gonna click on software, upgrade, and then choose which one you'd like. I highly recommend business edition. It's worth every penny. Hey guys, welcome back. For those of you that are new around here, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette and I hope that you are going to join our little crafting community We'd love to have you. Today we are going to go over everything rhinestones. There's a ton to learn in this video, so I hope you'll stick around to the end. If everybody's ready now, let's do this. My last video was on how to press several different heat transfer materials onto the same material. I used HTV, glitter HTV, and rhinestones all on one canvas tote and I went through the steps of pressing multiple materials onto one project and I had a few people ask to see how I made that design in Silhouette Studio. So just real quick I'm going to go over that we're not going to spend too much time on it though until we get to the actual rhinestone part. I brought in my design and added the text that I needed just sized everything up. The design is from Creative Fabrica and I will put a link to that in the description. Okay, this is where I start designing for the rhinestone template. All I'm doing is creating very thin rectangles to look like shiny rays coming off of the word bling. I'm going to duplicate the little rectangle and check to make sure that I only have a single row of rhinestones for each. I'm just going to arrange them, get them all situated. The whole process. We can delete those. Now I'm grouping everything but the rhinestone template part. Now I'm grouping the template. going to group all of it together and I'm going to make sure it is the exact size that I want it because after you convert those rays to rhinestones you're not going to be able to resize it. I'm going to select the template, choose linear fill, and then release rhinestones. Be sure to group them together and there's the finished design. Now let's kick it up a notch. We're going to be using the magic flock. We're going to use the rhinestone heat transfer tape. It all comes in this package. I have two different colors of rhinestones. Both are size SS10. And I have a canvas tote from the Dollar Tree. Let's get a measurement. It measures approximately nine by 11. To work with rhinestones, you want to start with a cut file. We're going to use this high heel shoe. The top line on the rhinestone panel gives you choices for the fill pattern. The first choice is no rhinestones. The second choice is an outline. Third choice is linear fill. And last you have radial fill. The second line of choices is the size of your rhinestone. We have 10 SS to work with today. Below that, you have your spacing that determines how close your rhinestones will be together. And you can adjust that through the slider bar, through the up and down arrow keys, or you can type in a specific number. You can draw rhinestones freehand, but I am terrible at it. 
just know that that is an option and then below that you have release rhinestones I'm going to fill that with the linear fill panel and then I'm going to release the rhinestones now each one of those circles is individual and you can move them however you like you can adjust them so that it looks just the way you want it you can also pull up the menu and delete or any of those functions but for right now we're going to group this bunch together because I'm going to do the heel in a different color so let's go through and do the heel our rhinestones are 10 SS we're going to do the linear fill and release the rhinestones now I want a more definite break in between the shoe and the heel so I'm going to remove some of these the rest of those are connected to the shoe so let's group this together so they don't move around ungroup the shoe and remove the ones we do not want in there Once that's all set, we can delete those. I'm going to move that out of the way and group the shoe together. We can get everything situated on our design mat. And it's ready to go to the send panel. We're going to place the magic block onto the mat. I've, I've removed the backing. You can see that the block is approximately 11 and 3 quarters, so you want to take that into consideration when you're placing your design on the actual mat and we can send it to cut. Peel the flock up off of the mat and most of the circles stayed in place. The ones that did not come out, we'll just have to weed them out. And then you're going to place your magic flock back onto the backing. going to do the shoe in the darker rhinestones you want to dump out a decent amount and when you're getting them into the little holes you want to kind of pat in a circular motion it's kind of hard to explain um, but you push down and kind of spin them around and lift up at the same time. When you have most of an area filled, you want to grab your little tweezers and fill in any of the holes that did not get filled in and carry on. You want to push the extras out of the way as you go. This does get easier with practice. The best tool to use is a paint edger, the little foam paint edgers with the plastic handles. But mine has disappeared and we are currently holding investigations as to who walked off with it my son is the biggest suspect at this i'm going to do the heel in lighter color rhinestones and we are ready for the transfer tape make sure it's all pressed on there well When you lift up, it's good to go.
Now we can grab our blank, which in this case is the canvas tote and get our design centered. I'm going to trim away the excess tape on the heel because I'm just going to do it all in one press. Get that set in place. I have my heat press preheated to 345 degrees. And we're going to press for 15 seconds. And there you have it. 